Welcome back to Mass Appeal, named as, quote, the place to eat in Great Barrington by the New York Times and, quote, where to eat by the Boston Globe. Castle Street Cafe in Great Barrington is a hidden gem in the Berkshires. Chef Michael Ballin joins us with a recipe for short ribs braised in Big Elm Stout. And I saw a finished product, and it looks amazing, really Chef Really good. Thank you very much. Well, it's the week before the Super Bowl, and people are starting to make plans. So I thought what we try and do today is just raise the bar a little bit about Super Bowl cuisine and make something that's a little more ambitious than just chili or pizza. Chips and dip. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Like an actual meal, right? And the dish we're going to make takes a lot of cooking time, but it doesn't take very much prep time. Prep time. So the game plan for the day is before the pre-game show starts, we're going to make this. By the time halftime comes, your food is done and it's only going to take about 15 minutes in the kitchen. Sounds oh. good to me. And your kitchen's going to smell good. And if you're sad that the Pats aren't going to be in the Super Bowl, you can be excited about short ribs. You can take solace in this. Right, and in this exactly. recipe. As mm -hmm. people are getting ready to, uh, you know, Super Bowl and beer kind of go together, well, that's also the theme for today because we're going to be cooking with beer. Uh, this is stout from Big Elm Brewery in Sheffield, Massachusetts, which is a, a local brewery. And uh, this is going to add tremendous amount of flavor. People are familiar with cooking with wine, but yes, you can also cook with beer. And this is going to end up being a family-friendly meal because all the alcohol is going to cook out, and there's no reason why you can't serve this to anyone. So what we're going to start out doing is browning some boneless beef short ribs. And as you'll see, this is a nice, thick chunk of beef. And mm -hmm. you were saying short ribs, if you're going to get them in the store, it's, it's a relatively inexpensive cut yes. of meat. Much less expensive than steak or prime rib or filet mignon or most other cuts of beef. Um, the less expensive cuts of beef sometimes take more time to cook. And what that means is when this simmers in liquid, it's going to be tender. It's going to cook for a long time. You can't overcook this. It will not be dried out. It won't be overcooked like a steak some, sometimes can be. It can be tough and dried out, yes. That's, I've done that before. So it's <laughs> so difficult it's... to mess this up, which is music to my ears. I know, me too. Now, while you're, you're getting this all prepared and putting some fresh herbs in there, tell us about Castle Street Cafe, Chef Michael. And I know you're celebrating 25 years this year. Yeah, very excited. Uh, not many restaurants make it for 25 years. Um, we started out in one space, and then when the opportunity to expand came, we doubled the size and added a piano jazz bar. Uh, we're right in the heart of downtown Great Barrington, right next to the Mahaley Theater, which is a classic old great Mahaley venue. Theater. So there's some great concerts coming up there, like Cowboy Junkies and Andy DeFranco, and we have the good fortune to be right next door. So. I feel like we're in the theater district in downtown Great Barrington. Mm -hmm. It's a very exciting place to be. So if people are going to a show, they can come and grab something to eat beforehand. They'll be full the whole time, and they can dance the night away. Or they can go to your restaurant and get a show where there's jazz uh, music. That too, and there's quite a few jazz musicians from the Pioneer Valley, Springfield, Hartford area who travel to Great Barrington because the reality is there are not very many venues for jazz. So we have some great musicians, uh, a wide variety of music, and uh, it's a fun place to go out for the night. And oh. the food we're looking at right now, this looks pretty good. So we're going to brown these short ribs for a little bit. And is, it, is that just thyme that you put on there? Yeah, a little fresh thyme and mm -hmm. salt and pepper. So awesome. you're letting the ingredients do the talking. There's not a lot of other things in the, in the dish, you know what I mean? Um, that is true. Uh, this is a relatively simple dish, but sometimes the best things in life are simple. Well, and I uh, think that's true of Great Barrington cooking. You know, a, a lot of the cooking out in the Berkshires is exactly that. You get good ingredients. You get local we, ingredients. We do, and we like to feature local ingredients. And the, really, the star of this dish is the uh, the big, big Elm Stout. I'm sure there's local microbreweries in the Springfield and Hartford area and oh, yes. throughout Mas Western Massachusetts. It's really been a huge change in America. I mean, 25 years ago. These kind of breweries didn't well, exist could, at all. You could count them on your hand. And now mm -hmm. they're everywhere. Every so. town you can count them on your hand. There's so many of them. It's amazing. So we're just going to brown this a little bit. And then once it's nice and browned, into the pan. You, do you take, oh, you take the meat out once you brown yeah, it? OK. I've got some, some diced finely, onions. Finely diced, diced onions. Now, I see it's, the, it's almost like a. It's almost a puree. Yeah, quite. almost a puree. So and then, really in fine. contrast, I've got these shallots. Completely, yeah, no, total contrast, but right? This is the interesting thing. You're putting in full shallots. Why well, are you doing that? You know, you have these big chunks of beef. 
they're going to cook for a long time in the oven. Sometimes food kind of shrinks or falls apart in the oven. I want to start out with something that's pretty big and recognizable. And also, I like uh, I like to see what I'm eating. Yeah, uh, you want like to know what, know it what is. I'm eating. Yeah, um, there's no mystery or surprise like this because, as you'll see later, when this comes out, my God, there's a big shot in my beef and it has a lot of flavor. <laughs> There's a big shot, and you could actually eat it. it. Won't be overpowering. It'll be just no, cooked in all the flavors. And oh gosh, I'm dying to try this. So now you just have some peeled carrots, and you're just chopping those up. And now, once you put the onion and the shallot and the carrot in, do you add the beer on You'll, top of yep, that yep. immediately, or do you? Okay, I don't know if you had to brown the ingredients that are in there. Uh, now. These are going to brown for a little bit. Okay. And you know what I'm loving about this recipe too? It's big game food, and normally when you're getting ready for the game, you, you have those fatty foods. You know what I mean? You got your chili, you got your nachos. There's nothing bad for well, you in this. And this is this is really hearty, hearty food. And you know, I like to encourage people to cook at home. Uh, I think there's a lot of TV cooking which tries to intimidate people at home from cooking. But this is really pretty simple. As you'll see, we're going to do the cooking part of this. The prep part in, in real time is going to spend the next two and a half or three hours in the oven cooking slowly, but you can be out and about doing whatever you want. Yeah, this, is, this is when we plunk on the couch and yeah. we start watching the game. This is about first quarter right now, right. starting. So I've got Ooh. some garlic in, I've got this beef in. You see, that's a pretty su substantial piece of beef. Oh, yeah. It's a nice piece. And then we just I'm let it sit for a little bit. Sauce. Barbecue sauce. Homemade barbecue sauce. Ooh. Nice. A homemade barbecue sauce, that's probably what? You know, you have some vinegar in there. A little brown sugar, some tomato paste, uh, so garlic. I've got some tomato paste here as well. And that's going to thicken this and give it some nice good flavor. And what you want to do really is submerge this beef okay. in Big Elm Stout. Oh, do you need now more how many, than one can? Well, this is going to take about two cans, I'm going to say. Perfect. Right, well, so then. So you can open another one fine, there, Seth. Are you sure it doesn't it's take three great. cans? <laughs> <laughs> I think this might be a four or five can dish. Seth, right this, here. it takes one and seven eighths cans. So oh. we're going to it. All right, well, let's see. There you go. Oh. Mm hmm. What well, about me? Tasty. I'm not here pregnant you are, anymore. Actually. Come, well, you're I like here for breakfast. I'm going to give you a glass. Okay, so you mix it all together, right. and then what is the, the oven set at? Uh, oven set at 350. All right. Yeah. And what, then you, you said you cook it for here, quite a long also time. A very important part, we keep this covered. Covered the, the whole time. The is going to keep most of the liquid in. It's going to simmer slowly. You really don't hardly need this much attention here. Um, check it after two hours or so. When the meat is really tender and falling apart, it's done. And we're going to come back and show you what it looks like. Wonderful. Sounds good to me. Well, congratulations again on 25 years this year, Chef Michael. I can't wait to try that recipe. I can smell it. It smells mm -hmm. amazing. Welcome back to Mass Appeal. We are back with Chef Michael Ballin from Castle Street Cafe in Great Barrington. It smells amazing in here. The short ribs are out of the oven three wink, hours wink. later, and they're ready to eat. They are. So more or less what happened, in case you missed this earlier, we put that in the oven for about three hours and we're simulating it now. We have a finished product here. And and you're right, everything's cooked down. I just want to show you what happens to those shallots after about two hours in the oven. Um, they're very tender, they fall apart. They have that sweet onion flavor that just goes so well with beef and with beer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. which we have right now here. Now you cook with and you drink. Mm -hmm. Why not? And then we're going to put that in a nice plate with some mashed potatoes Homemade that are ready to go. mashed potatoes. Do you have any mashed potato secrets for people? Because I think some, it's one of those things that everybody can make, but people can't make great mashed potatoes. How do you do it? Um, don't skimp on the butter and salt. Okay, <laughs> that's fine by me. <laughs> Good tip. All right, while you're plating that up, tell us about your cookbook. Well, I know you have a cookbook, but you're also coming out with a, a book of it's kind of the, the memoirs of a chef. Well, we've been in business for 25 years. The Castle Street Cafe cookbook came out about five years ago with just some uh, favorite recipes from the restaurant. But I've also been writing some articles about just what it's like to be a chef and uh, run a restaurant. You know, when I first started cooking, there were no TV shows with chefs cooking, no. and now everybody is fascinated with the life of a chef. Everybody goes out to dinner. Everybody takes pictures on their phone of what they're having for dinner <laughs> in the restaurant. So it's, it's true. It's become it's, very true. it's become so in, and I just thought that we should uh, well, people would be interested in a little feel for uh, what it's like to be a chef. And one of the other things I like about this dish in particular is it's juicy. 
Yeah. And that's one of the most important attributes of food that I can think of is that uh, we like food that is juicy and moist. And, it's comfort and food. It oh. is comfort food. And um, I think this would go just a one at halftime of the Super Bowl. Oh, are you kidding? Yeah, this is top of my list. Oh, my gosh, that's beautiful. Now, Michael, you have this. It's probably a mainstay on the menu. What else are your, some of your favorite dishes that you have? Uh, right now, we're serving in the wintertime uh, roasted salmon with roasted Ooh. root vegetables. But as the season changes, we'll be doing salmon with asparagus and salmon with mango salsa and salmon with tomato basil sauce. So whatever's fresh and seasonal we do, we're one of the only places that makes cassoulet, which is a really classic French dish from the south of France that's braised lamb shank and garlic sauces and white beans. But we also have vegan and vegetarian and pasta and burgers and, uh, you know, I want the restaurant to be a place where anyone can walk in the door and say, hey, there's something I can eat here. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, you know, it bears repeating, it's, it's local ingredients, and you highlight the farms that put, you know, you were saying earlier, it's not just duck with these greens, it's, it's duck with greens from this farm. Absolutely, and I have been putting the names of the farms on the menu of my restaurant before the phrase farm to table be, even was invented. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, the original menu from my restaurant 25 years ago, the backside listed the, the local dairy farm, the local cheese maker, the local bread maker, the local pasta maker, all that stuff. And we've been doing that ever since. And now 25 years later, you're celebrating this anniversary and uh, you're still supporting local, local business. Are. I think that's wonderful, Chef Michael. I, all I can think about is taking a bite I know, of this. I'd love to sit and chat. All now people can eating. go and visit you in Great Barrington. And of course, like you said, that. Um, the musical venue is right there. The yeah, the performance venue is right venue. next yep. door. So, and plus our own music as well. We, we try and make it really comfortable for people. So oh, once I'm again, dig in. it's Thank fun, you. it's sure. easy, and if you want to learn more about Castle Street Cafe, just visit them online or give them a call 413-528-5244 to make your reservations today.